Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are in Shenzhen, China, the Silicon Valley of the East. This is the Huaqianbei area, known for its over 20 electronics malls selling phone parts, circuit components, and uh, even computer repairs. Now in this video, we'll be buying some fake tech products and reviewing them to see how good they actually are. Hello everyone, I am now back in Singapore and let's take a look at all this tech that I've gotten from Hua Qiangbei in Shenzhen. Okay, so uh, let's start with the Apple fake Apple Watch Ultra or as they call it, the HK9 Ultra 2. <laughs> Alright, um, so of course they decided not to violate Apple's trademarks. The so seller told me that this is gonna be the this is the most advanced uh, Apple Watch Ultra clone that they have and it cost me one, 180 yuan which is um, in Singapore dollars 33 dollars and 59 cents and 2490 US dollars okay so this is actually pretty affordable compared to uh, let's say wish.com or Aliexpress so let's see if this is any good now over here on the label it says that there is an app store there is um, this AI watch faces. There is WeChat Pay and AliPay support. Although I would not recommend signing to your WeChat Pay or AliPay account, uh, you will not, do not know what is installed on these devices. Um, and there is also uh, this public transport code, which is used to uh, actually get on the public transport. So this is pretty useful. But again, it's linked to your payment account, so I don't recommend. Um, there is Baidu Maps as well, which is one of the popular maps in uh, mainland China. There is also uh, local playback and, and recording. And over here it says, yes, OpenAI's new chat GPT, which is real. And we will we'll find out soon. <laughs> okay, let's open it up. Okay, so we have some F official Apple Watch Ultra design things. But here it says it's the HK9 Ultra 2. I'm gonna chuck that to the side. Um, now here's the actual watch. Okay, so it kind of it really looks like an Apple Watch. Um, I okay, so for all these products, I've only opened them to check if they are working when I bought them. Since that's the thing in Shenzhen, basically you can you can open up all your products and see if they are working and if you don't like and whether you like them and if you don't like them they're gonna put it back inside the box and seal it back up <laughs> and give it to the next customer <laughs> so the the seller was kind enough to give me an extra watch band just she said just uh, pick whatever you want so i got this uh, it doesn't really feel like the real one though but this is the one that was included in the box 
Now this is quite similar to the Apple to Apple's band, so let's quickly put this on. Okay, let's see how how easy it is. Is it to put it on? Now I don't really use Apple Watch, so I hope this is the right way to put it on. Okay. <laughs> It's been a while and it seems like I've managed to get the band on but it, it looks weird, it looks weird. I'm, I'm pretty sure the top of the watch is supposed to be like this, right? It's supposed to be in this orientation. But the band look... I don't know, it may just be me. <laughs> I, <I've laughs> okay, okay. Let's power it on right now. Oh, and it comes with this uh, magnetic puck as well. Which is kind of like, which is kind of like Apple charger. We'll test that out later. Okay, let's power this on. Welcome, powered by WearFit. Okay, let's see what we have here. Let's look at the watch first. So we have this Apple Watch Ultra Light watch face. Uh, well, this is all over the place. The compass, I think the compass works up there. This, I'm not sure what is this about. The fitness rings are definitely not not real. Okay, I'm gonna put it on to find out if we can measure my heart rate. So here we are. We have the watch band on. The heart rate is not updating. The weather. It sounds correct actually, it's 30 degrees, around 30 degrees here, but it may just be a generic number. Okay, heart rate, oh it's right here, okay, measuring, let's see. 72 beats per minute, now I can't verify if this is correct, but actually that's a pretty easy way to check if that's correct. Okay, let's check the heart rate of this power bank. Okay, please wear a watch and measure, okay. Is this a real heart rate sensor? Oh wow, wow it's actually not working. Okay, it, it, oh 78, 79 beats per minute. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try the box now. Okay, yeah. Um, I think I I think this is a real this is a real heart rate sensor. Okay, let's put the box back on now. I mean, it's actually it actually has lights at the back there. Which is quite impressive. I mean, I didn't expect a, a, a twenty $25 fake to be this good. Okay, next, let's look at what other features we have here. The scrolling kind of works, but it's not great. And there's this widgets panel at the side here. It's kind of like the, the iPad widgets panel, but at the same time, uh, yeah, it's not convincing at all. What's this? Weather. Okay, where's this weather for? Okay, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. This, sounds, this, this weather sounds correct. Okay, if I'm gonna swipe down on top. Messages n without notice. Okay, no, no, no notifications. Yeah, swipe from below. This is the Apple Watch. Uh, this is the Apple Watch uh, Watch OS widget panel. There's a stopwatch here. And it works. It's a timer. Okay. Alarms. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they, they did a pretty okay job of copying watch OS, except for the font. And if I click on this button here, it should bring up the quick settings. Yes, yes it does. This is the always on display mode. Okay, that's, the watch is 35% and we will charge it later. What other things can we add? Oh, we can add WeChat Pay. And we can find my phone. Okay, let's find my phone. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully I can turn it off. Oh, and there's this compass thing and chat GPT as well. Okay, finish. Find my phone. Oh, the phone's actually ringing. Wow. Gonna turn up the volume so all of you can hear. Oh, and I need to watch an ad to, to, to stop the find my phone. <laughs> I'm here. How do I turn this off? I'm here. How do I turn this off? Uh, I'm here. What? I'm here. Okay, it's off now. Okay. 
and and you know one thing I noticed is that this thing has an OLED screen and it's only twenty five dollars and that's crazy. Okay, let's let's check out the features. This menu is really responsive. Check this out, guys. This is so responsive. Okay, what's this? Oh shit! <laughs> it was gonna it's, it was gonna like make an emergency call. Wow. Okay, so they they, they copied that too. What's what's this? Oh wow, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's running at one frame per second, but that's cool. Oh, I just died. My bad. Okay, so now let's move on to fitness indoor running. Okay, let's start that. Also, there's there's this uh song preloaded. I can't play that because it's, YouTube is gonna demonetize me. The heart rate isn't working. Oh, the heart rate is working now. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring this out to test if it actually works. Let's see, fitness. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, it actually works. Oh, it actually works. Okay, I'm gonna wear this for a day and we'll find out if any all of these features are correct. Okay, let's look at chat GPT now. I mean, this is the the fun part, right? Okay, smart Q&A, smart Q&A. Oh, please allow the app to obtain. Let me try. Intelligent creation. Fitness plan. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I feel like that's probably going to be something that Apple comes up with soon. Okay, let's see. Walking. Okay, I have no idea why it's not working. Okay, I'll just assume the chat GPT works. Okay, what's it? Use AI voice. Oh, okay, it needs to record audio. You're using my phone. There's no microphone in this. What? Hello, world. This is Shen Han. Generating, generating, generating. What? Okay, of course, it had my name wrongly, but that's alright. Now what? Okay, never mind. It's, it's, it's broken. Okay, I assume. Okay, it may work, but it's gonna take a long time. All right. Now let's put it on the charger and see if that works. Wow! Check out the animation. The 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 puck is so loose though. Check this out. It's so loose, but I mean it apparently is working. So all right, we just leave it on the charge and see how it goes. All right. Next up, we have the magic keyboard and Apple Pencil. Now, this magic keyboard is a bit on the pricier side because it costs 280 yuan which is $52.25 Singapore dollars or $38.74 US dollars. From the box, I mean the, the box isn't, isn't really very accurate because of the font and uh, but the picture of the keyboard itself, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, let's just open it up and see how it is. Alright. This packaging is a little bit difficult to open. And here is this is our magic keyboard. So okay, on first glance, this looks really good. It looks something like as something exactly like um the the official magic keyboard. However, when we look at the side, <laughs> as you can see, we can we need to charge this magic keyboard because it doesn't have, it isn't able to uh, get the power directly from iPad because I mean it didn't work with Apple, I mean it didn't like collaborate with Apple on this. Yeah, so there is a Bluetooth pairing and power and, and those normal keyboard stuff. And some user manual here and we'll put that to the side. Let's open it up now. Okay, we have this nice soft touch fabric, kind of like the official Apple one. And here we have uh, some styrofoam and over here I think it should be the charging cable. Yes, it is. Okay, we just put all of those aside. This thing charges by USB-C. Okay, so it looks like we have to turn it on. And let's just get my iPad over here. 
Currently I have the Logitech Folio Touch keyboard connected to my iPad. I mean I, I think it's pretty good, it makes it become somewhat like a surface, although the combo touch makes it more like a surface. The keyboard on the other hand is, is quite quite average I would say. Um, it's not a scissor switch keyboard, so it's not very really impressive. So let's see if the magic keyboard can do better than this for the touch. Okay, so let's connect it. Alright, so first impressions, this looks good. I mean, it looks exactly like the, uh, the official one. And you can just close it like this when the iPad is locked. Wow, okay, that's good. So now let's get this keyboard connected up. So we're going to hold the connect button and now get it in pairing mode. I'm going to go to settings and look for a Bluetooth keyboard. Here it is. Okay. Yep. And I think we are connected. Yes, we have the cursor here. And we're just going to look at how smooth this is. Wow, I'm actually impressed. This is actually a really smooth keyboard cursor. I mean trackpad. Um, let's try some gestures. Oh wow, that works too. Okay, let's try five fingers. Okay, five fingers, kind of, kind of. No, it doesn't work. No, five fingers doesn't work. I thought it would work. Okay, three fingers work. The trapper is kind of small. Five fingers. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. The trapper is a bit too small for that. Okay. So yeah, I mean the trackpad is pretty good. So now let's and the keyboard has a backlight too. That's pretty impressive. So now let's do a, a typing test and see how it goes. Okay, the the keyboard is kind of small. It's not the best word for me or anything, but I would say it has a scissor switch keyboard, which is something that Logitech doesn't have. So I would say this is um, above average iPad keyboard uh, I'm not sure if this is better than um, or close to the magic keyboard because I mean both are small I think, I think it's, it's the size that limits how fast I can type with this so I would say both are pretty good the magic keyboard still wins because I mean it has a direct connection to the iPad it doesn't require pairing separately or like charging it separately etc okay so now let's take a look at the fake Apple Pencil, which cost me 70 yuan, which is 13 dollars and 6 cents Singapore dollars, or 968 US dollars. So 960, for 968 US dollars, what do we get with this Apple Pencil? Okay, so here we have um, a very accurate box. It really looks like the Apple one. I mean, like, it's indistingu indistinguishable, right? Okay, so let's open up the box and see how it is inside. Now let's get this pad up. Let's try putting on top. Okay, it says Apple Pencil here. I think the iPad is a little confused though. <laughs> okay. Now let's uh, pad it up. I think I may need to do this. Okay, I think we are connected. The seller claims it has wireless charging though, which is a pro. Not all fake Apple Pencils have wireless charging. Okay, so let's test this out in uh, sketchbook. Okay, let's try writing something. And let's erase it. This is definitely not the exact same experience you get with a real Apple Pencil because it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. So which means that um, everything is of equal weight on the screen, right? So we don't have any um, like uh, thicker or thinner parts of the text and I think honestly this is fine for mm, like it's, uh, most normal note taking that but if you are a professional artist and you need the pressure sensitivity then I guess you got to buy the real Apple, Apple Pencil but for everyone else for 968 US dollars this is a pretty good deal I would say yeah so definitely would recommend okay what's next Okay, so we have the AI pen. Now this is kind of interesting. Apparently it is able to um, read text on uh, paper and it's able to translate it into different languages offline. And that's quite impressive for something that costs 
320 yuan, which is 59.71 Sing dollars or 44.27 US dollars. Okay, and you may think, what what is this ripping off, right? It's actually ripping off the Alpha Egg Pen, which is something in China also. This is uh, an official product in China. It costs around 259 US dollars. Okay, so the features we have here is scan translation, voice translation, photo translation, dictionary, excerpt, and smart record. Okay, let's open it up and find out. Alright, so packaging, I mean, it's nothing, nothing special, I guess. We have this case which kind of looks like a Wii remote. Okay, so let's start turning on and see how it, how it goes. Welcome. Okay. Okay, let's see what we're going to translate today. Let's translate the, the manual. Uh, that will be quite interesting. Alright. So, we have Wi Fi functionality, but we don't actually need to connect it to the internet. I have a feeling this is running on Android, seeing the user interface. So, let's try offline scan translation. Please place the pen in the middle of the text to scan. Okay, translating from English to Cantonese. But let's try it the other way. Simplified Chinese to mm, English. Okay. Okay, let's try this. You're supposed to place it down like this and just scan. Okay, it's still, it's still trying to read it, it's still processing. Okay, so I, I mean, it is actually mostly correct except for the first character, but that's decent. Okay, so now the translation is a bit messed up because of the first character. Department of the Pen is a collection of scanning dictionaries, speech translation, English language, mathematics, teacher class, <laughs> synchronous learning, scanning translation, oral evaluation, digital video. There's a bunch of languages as well. Yeah. Quite a decent selection, I'll say. Okay, let's try photo translation. Okay, I'll say it's pretty decent, but it's just capturing everything around there, which is not the best. It should, it should, they should have a crop function. And what's this? Smart record. Click the record button and start recording. Let's select English US. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Okay, that's pretty decent. Okay, let's save the translation to simplified Chinese. Okay, I mean it's it's not it's not the best translation, okay? But I would say that's pretty decent. Besides all the translation features, this screen is sharp and it feels good. I mean it's actually pretty premium as well. So I'll say it's worth the uh, $44. Oh, I just found out how to use the, the 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 voice thing. So there's two buttons over here, so I'm supposed to press one of them. Hello, are you full? Yes, I am. Oh, so, so it, show, it shows multiple translations, okay. Yes, I had a great lunch. Okay, that's decent, I guess. Okay, so next we have the AirPods. So, for the AirPods, um, this one cost me 200 yuan, which is $37.32 Singapore dollars and $27.67 US dollars. So, I mean, it's a pretty, de uh, pretty, pretty decent price fake. Uh, the box, I mean, I w the box doesn't look really realistic. Okay, the front looks okay. The font is completely different. The Apple logo on both sides are misaligned. Uh, and there's also, the font here is also wrong and the sticker is pasted wrongly. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We need, we need to find out how well this, how, how good this thing sounds and how it compares to my earbuds which is the Sony 
XM4 earbuds. Okay, so let's quickly unbox it. Now I've already unboxed it because um, there was a few technical glitches earlier. So I've already unboxed it, we'll just, we'll just test the sound now. Okay, so designed by Apple in California, a bunch of manuals, we're gonna put that to the side. And here we have the AirPods. This is our AirPods Pro. I mean, this looks identical to the real one, except for the text at the back. But this looks identical. Okay, so here's some packaging. And they give an iPhone USB-C to lightning cable, which is pretty nice. Not sure if the real AirPods Pro gives you this in the first place. I mean, I may be wrong, but I'm not sure. So, okay, so let's put this to the side. Let's put the wire to the side. And now let's pair it with our iPad. So let's open it up now. Boom, instantly, not your AirPods Pro. Okay, connect. Press and hold the button on the back of the charging case. Okay, connecting. And we are connected. Okay, so let's try it out. Okay, before that, um, look at all these features. We have all the AirPods Pro features. Uh, Noise cancellation, transparency. Uh, we also have this automatic ear detection and spatial audio, etc. So that's really cool. I mean, it's basically like an AirPods Pro. Okay, so let's test out the audio now with some no copyright music. Alright, that, that sounded pretty decent. Let's compare this to the Sony's. Okay, so here are the XM4s. So let's put them in and see how they sound like. Okay, I, I, I gotta say the, no, the Sony still sound better. Let's be real. The Sony's, I mean, they are 370 Singapore dollars around there. They definitely sound better than, than these 20, these $37 AirPods. Um, but the AirPods, they sound, okay, the, the Sony's have a greater range of sound that you can hear. You can hear a deeper bass and the highs are, are clearer. But the AirPods, they sound decent as well. I mean, they are, they are definitely no Sony, but, I would say that um, these are actually pretty solid. If I didn't have the Sony's, I wouldn't think that these are bad. Uh, yeah, so definitely worth that 27 US dollars. Now, let's see the last product that we have for today. The Retro Console. Okay, so for the Retro Console, it cost me 300 yuan, which is around $55.98 Singapore dollars or 41.50 US dollars. So this is kind of pricey, but for this price, what do we get? I don't say this really, a, I, I don't really think this is a fake. It's more like something quite interesting that I found there. So it has this nice transparent design. It's plastic, but it feels nice. Um, there, are there are buttons for many different types of controllers because this can run games from many different consoles. And there's also this bezel-less screen, which I think looks great. Okay, we are in the console now. So let's go through the menus. It's quite smooth. Okay, let's try opening some games. So as you can see, there are many games on many different consoles here. So um, let's try PS1. That's kind of demanding because that is 3D graphics, right? Okay, so let's look for Gran Turismo. Okay, let's let it start up. Okay, so let's take a look at the ports that we have here. We have USB-C, the headphone jack, 
Uh, there's actually two SD card slots. One of them is the inter basically the internal storage for this with all the games, and there's another one you can add more games. And here we have this to connect hard drive, I assume. Yeah. And then and the volume button over here. So pretty decent set of uh, connections that we have here. We have one single firing speaker, just like this, and I can cover it. Okay, let's try arcade mode. Single race, normal difficulty, and we'll pick the default vehicles. Okay, so I think from my previous experience, V should be the accelerator and Y should be the brake. Alright, here we go. Okay, the graphics kind of feel like PS1, so I'm not complaining. Oh no, 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 I'm falling behind. Alright. Okay, so with that, we've come to the end of this video. I hope that this tech and, and fake tech was interesting and gave you a new insight into what's going on at Hua Xiangfei, some of the malls at Hua Xiangfei in Shenzhen. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed it, please remember to leave a like. Not, and uh, if you have any comments or any suggestions, just feel free to leave it down in the comments box. And uh, subscribe if you want to stay tuned to you have more tech videos from me or uh, more Shenzhen videos. Alright, so with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and bye.